Well, I'll get to get started. So, thanks guys for, for coming in and, um, and watching this talk. So, it's on? It's not very loud. Like this? Uh, yeah, so saying just thanks for coming. Um, so what we're going to be covering today is um, basically how to approach search in a decouple environment. So assuming you guys are already maybe thinking about or already doing uh, decouple to some extent, how to tackle things like you know doing searches on Apache Solar or Elasticsearch. Uh, and in, in this particular case, we're, we're going to talk a bit about GraphQL. So the, the structure of this is going to be basically just giving you guys a bit of context as to how the problem came to be. And we're going to dive a bit into architecture. Um, and then we're just going to play a bit with GraphQL and see um, how we can put something together that matches sort of the typical um, user experience for a search page. So just to uh, cover the introductions, uh, my name is Duarte. I'm the technical director at Anna Branch, And I'm based in Byron. I author a couple of modules on Drupal.org and uh, you know, web problem panels, user disk quota, and most recently just been playing with GraphQL and, and released this uh, GraphQL search API module, which we'll be covering today. So just a bit about Anna Branch to give you guys a bit of context of how this came to be. So we are a company that works mainly in the careers and education space, and we have several products um, out there, some for graduates, some for postgraduates, some for undergraduates. And a lot of those are directory-based products. Um, some of them are print as well, but on the digital side. And, and so search is, is really at a core, as you can imagine, on any sort of job portal. Um, you know, search filtering, faceting is, is quite important. Uh, and so um, this, this talk was, was sort of one of the first problems that, um, that we first encountered when we started thinking about doing decoupled. So what was the problem? Um, so we have all these products, and all of them are Drupal websites, pretty much. And one of the things that started happening is the more products we release, um, the more complex it started becoming managing all these things. And because each of them is on its own sort of monolith, uh, you kind of need to worry about how to share, you know, um, user interface between applications, uh, how to perform search, um, how to do maintenance. Maintenance was the biggest probably the bis biggest hurdle as we started sort of scaling. Um, the other thing was um, editor experience. So by having all these products, um, if you consider that you, you can have like a core sort of editor team, they sort of needed to hop between all these products. Uh, and we kind of wanted to, to enrich that um, and provide a better user experience for our editors. Uh, the other obvious one, which is probably you know the, the major one for all of us that go into the couple, was a bit more flexibility on the front end. So we just wanted to leverage as much as we could, um, uh, you know, the user experience end of things, um, while still using Drupal as a content management system. And as I mentioned before, because all these project, projects are very focused on search and they're directory-based products, um, we ended up with, you know, several cores for multiple products, uh, increasingly harder to maintain um, and, and hard to share things between them. So we started having these, these scaling issues on, on search as well. Um, and one of the main things from a, from a business and operations side of things was we had all these products, but no real intersection between them, not just on the technical level, but from a content perspective as well. I mean, we have maybe a graduate job portal, have a course jobs board for you know, undergraduates, for example. It would be cool to show some courses next to a job and just sort of like share things around. Uh, and while you could do that with web services and, and, and there's, there are several processes that you could take, it wasn't really the easiest of things. Um, so we kind of wanted to really maximize the potential of our content. We, we you know, take, take the content that we write, the articles that we have, the jobs, the courses, and try to make them reach to as man, many channels as possible. And that would be on the product level, but also you know, mobile applications, all kinds of, of different user experiences. So this is sort of what we had. Um, um, call it multi-monolith architecture, if you will. So we have you know, a bunch of applications, each of them within its own stack, front end, you know, rendering in Drupal, the typical sort of scenario that you probably, got, you probably encounter with its own CMS, its own database, and sometimes its own search, either total diff separate instance or, 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 or its own core in, in the case of Solar. So we started coming, uh, started discussing this and, and, and say, okay, what, what could we do? We want to leverage Drupal as a content system. Uh, and how can we maximize the potential of our content? And we really started looking at Drupal from a pure content API perspective. 
and, and maintain sort of a, a single repository of content and apply that cope, um, con co you know, create once, publish everywhere uh, type of philosophy so that we can just release products uh, and have them as thin as possible just feeding from, from the content repository. And the other thing we wanted to do is we wanted to decouple search. Uh, we didn't want to maintain the same scenario that we had where we go into Drupal and we create all these views and we create a bunch of facets and, and Drupal has all this coupling um, um, so that you can, you can perform searches. We wanted just to maintain Drupal as agnostic as possible and just say, you know, just have content and consumers should care about what they want from this repository, but I don't want to sort of um, code into Drupal or configure into Drupal Maybe, you know, if a list of jobs has a pagination of 10 items or the sorting criteria is this and that, which is what you typically do if you create views. Uh, and finally, obviously, just fully decouple our front end, um, so, which we ended up doing in React. So the architecture will be looking something more similar to this. I um, actually forgot to put, just a sec, uh, give me just one sec. A bit of amateur thing, but I forgot the clock. Um, so I forgot, uh, so uh, we started looking at architecture and basically if you compare it to the previous one, you now have a bunch of application on the front end layer, but you have a, a, a unified content management system where all the content gets stored. You have a search and you can consider a search a service in this case, which, which can be used by applications um, and the applications would define their own requirements. Um, so the first problem we faced when we actually started doing this is, okay, cool, we're gonna do this. How do ac actually applications perform these searches? And I started talking with a bunch of people from you know, Drupal community and leverage uh, the knowledge that already exists. And there, lots of people come up with, with different approaches. One of them was just get the React applications talking to Solar, just make them you know, do queries. So we looked into this and first thing we found was a bunch of security implications, uh, which I suppose you could fix. You could go onto the Node.js level and start, you know, um, start tackling these, but really it's a sort of a solved problem already in Drupal, so it didn't really make much sense. Um, the second one was, okay, just create a, an entry point PHP file, you know, put it in your Drupal installation and have that sort of gateway, the search, and then React applications would call that, maybe expose as a little endpoint and, and go through there. But again, felt a bit sort of duplicating things. And in these two approaches, actually, uh, one of the things that they have in common is that you'd, you'd sort of like really tying yourself to solar and that's not a huge problem for us. We kind of use the solar, but it would be good if you can maintain some sort of um, uh, abstraction. Um, the other options were rest views. Uh, it, it was, you know, again, we would just be creating a bunch of views, uh, which we, is kind of like the, the thing we were trying to avoid and you know, we didn't find a great uh, fit for this. Um, you have JSON API, which is probably the strongest contender and actually a pretty, pretty interesting approach um, we found, but following sort of that type of REST um, approach, you, you start defining all these resources and, you know, slash node articles and, and it's quite verbose as well. And so uh, we, we, we I started sort of struggling with the concept a bit. And the other thing that I found with JSON API is that due to the nature of, of REST, uh, when you often need to change things, um, chain requests and, you know, create a node. You first need to create a term so that you can assign to node. and there are ways to, f to do this on JSON API with like the sub request module for those who are familiar, uh, but felt a bit, you know, didn't feel simple for an approach where you kind of get, you know, hey, here's, you're a front end developer, just go and, and crack at it. And finally, GraphQL. Uh, and GraphQL was just immediately started using it and it just made a lot of sense. Uh, it fixes a lot, a lot of the, these problems and I'll explain a bit why. Uh, but the only real approach that you had using GraphQL to perform s complex search using Solar or Elasticsearch was to create views, which was a problem. So you could extend a schema or you, you could do something custom, but the only kind of out-of-the-box way for you to use a a GraphQL is to use GraphQL views, which is another module, and create a bunch of views and ex extend that through GraphQL which will be creating views, which is what we don't want. Uh, it does give you some niceties. You, 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 I'll explain a bit GraphQL in, in a minute, and you guys can see how flexible it is. It allows you to define exactly what you want um, return in the response, but uh, still, you would be putting presentation logic in Drupal, which is something that we just define as a primary rule that we were going to avoid. So, um, not sure how familiar sort of the audience is with GraphQL, so I'm just gonna assume that's not a lot. Um, 
So what GraphQL is, is an um, application query language. And what that means is, kind of think about it as your, you know, sort of SQL uh, on the application level. You can just write queries and, and get things returned. So instead of having all these endpoints for REST and predefining a bunch of APIs, you have one single endpoint and you perform a query and you get things uh, returned. And you can actually define exactly what you need. So you can say, I want a list of articles and I want the title and the body. Um, and maybe another consumer application using the exact same backend, no changes, can, can just say, yeah, I want a list of articles, but I actually want a, a thumbnail and a, you know, a subheading and whatever. Um, so that's quite flexible because you put a bit of responsibility in the consumers and they can have a lot of freedom on the user experience side of things. And Drupal's completely unaware. I, I just hold content. I don't care what you, you, know, what you ask. Um, the other thing that's quite amazing about GraphQL is that you can get a bunch of stuff in one request. So you can actually, for example, do a, you know, a, a get a list of articles and give me the main navigation and the header and give me the footer, all of this package in one single network request and just get everything back. And, and that, is, that is just a huge difference between using GraphQL and JSON API. Um, and you, you'll see how sort of simple the idea is. So just to wrap it up before we get into some things uh, a bit more interesting, um, the ideal solution is something that leverages the power of Search API. So Search API is an API that already provides pretty much all we need. It abstracts search backends, so you can actually do things completely unaware if you're using Solar or you know, Elasticsearch. Uh, it has a, API is quite comprehensive, so you can do a lot of complex things with it. Um, and it has amazing support and a great community behind it. So we, we really wanted to leverage this, but we also wanted to use GraphQL. Uh, so we wanted to, to define field structures. We wanted the consumer applications to define, I want this pagination system. I want this sorting criteria. All of this stuff on the consumer side. Cool. So architecture, a bunch of React apps in our case. GraphQL is a sort of, you could call it a content middleware or um, abstraction layer for Drupal. This allows you to get pretty much everything you want from Drupal. It builds itself on top of the entity API, so anything that's entities you can get out of the box. And via the search API, you can, um, you can actually perform queries if you have this module enabled. So this is something that I worked um, with another developer who's actually my brother and works at Jobico in Austria. And we had similar requirements and just joined forces and like, cool, we, we, we need this. Uh, let's, let's build something and just release it to the community. And what this does is it provides a schema for the GraphQL module so that you can actually perform um, search API operations directly from GraphQL. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, <laughs> time to wake up. All right, so I didn't really do a lot of prayers to demo got today, so I hope there's a lot of demoing here, so I hope everything works out. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to look at a couple of applications. In this case, we actually have just a couple of, you know, in this case here, a little course board with some facets in your, you know, your sorting criteria, your pagination. And we have the same thing, but this is a job board, pulling from the same content repository. And both of these are built in Next.js. And what we're going to do is we're going to guide you through the process of if you are building a React or Angular or Vue, whatever application, how you could tackle search using this module. All right, so the first thing you want to do is you want to have an um, installation, which I do here, that is connected to search, a has search API enabled, in this case, connected to a core, core, whole core instance. Uh, and you want to enable the GraphQL modules and the GraphQL search API module. And before we get into search, let me just check the time. I am going to just show you a bit of GraphQL in general, just a very abstract uh, type of presentation, just so you understand kind of you know how it actually works. So put yourself in you know the head of a front-end developer. In case you're a front-end developer, this actually might be make more sense. And think, okay, I'm writing an application. Um, I don't know nothing about what's going on in Drupal. You might not even be a Drupal developer, but I need stuff out of this system. Um, so the first thing that's probably worth mentioning this documentation explorer. And what this does is it um, sort of auto-documents um, the schema and tells you really what you can do with it. So you can see in this case, there's only two root types. You can either perform a query, get stuff out of the system, or you can do a mutation, which is basically write things. 
Uh, and if you do a query, you have a bunch of queries that you can choose from, and then you can click on the query and see you know, what's going on. So we're going to do a, a little node query and see what, what happens. So the first thing you, you'll notice is if you hit control space, you get sort of an autocomplete things of what you can do in the, le in the level of the graph that you're in. So um, we're just going to get some nodes, so we can do a node query. And within the node query, these are the things that you have access to. So if we just wanted, for example, to check what you know, count of nodes, you get you know, count of 75 nodes. You might want to maybe get some entities. So we're going to get that and see what we have there. And these are the list of fields, and this is how, the, how GraphQL works, that are at the entity level. So at the moment, I haven't really specified node or user or whatever. It's just a generic entity concept. Generic entities all have entity ID, entity label, things like that. Um, content entities, anyway. So if we do um, you know, entity ID, you get a list of, in this case, 10, just because it's li automatically limited by 10 by default. So if you actually want to start getting some fields, you do what's called a fragment. So you might do, OK, actually, assuming that, don't worry too much about the syntax, you, this documentation. It's more just the concept itself. Um, if I'm in each of these uh, return um, instances in the response, and if it's a node, I want, you know, and you'll see that you already have uh, you know, things that are specific to nodes, like a status. So we can get you know, maybe a title and a status, and done. Um, and again, remember that each application can define its own requirements. That's, that's the really cool thing. So you can have um, a, a UI that just needs a thumbnail, while another one doesn't. And that is up to the consumer to define, not in the back end, not in Drupal. Uh, you can continue and say, okay, cool, then maybe if I'm on, in an, in it's a node, if it's an article, or an employer in this case, say, uh, and then you get the fields that are actually specific to the node employer type. And if we do like uh, overall satisfaction rating, for example, you'll see that nodes that are employers will have this field, like this one here, while the other ones are, that just don't. Um, and then you're not parsers in React. You can, you can treat this and see if, if type equals this, then I'm expecting these fields and so on. So hopefully this gives some idea at least on how this works and what, what this all means before we get into search because it's a bit of a, an assumption that you kind of know at least a bit of GraphQL. So let's get started. So the first thing uh, is if you, if you enable the search API module, GraphQL search API module, uh, you're going to get this new field in the schema called search API search. And if you, if you sort of, no, no, I hate Siri. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want Siri. I never, w it just pops up. Um, so if you actually hover on it, you, you can click on it and see the documentation and what things it expects. And uh, GraphQL is typed, so you always get types uh, of what to expect. And the only thing really that's mandatory that you can see here as a, with a little exclamation mark is the index ID. So we're just going to write that down. Uh, I purposely decided to not have just predefined things and just copy paste. We'll see if that's a good idea or not. Um, so we're going to... Mm, cool, we have a list of documents. And then you can see that we only really have index ID because kind of like we were seeing with nodes and entities, I haven't specified a fragment for my index yet. So I'm just going to do that. And now these are all the fields that are my index, index uh, for search API. So let's just do a title and do that. Cool. All right. So first thing that's actually nice about this is that we are now getting data from Solar, not from Drupal. So this is basically telling Search API, hey, give me this data. Goes to Solar in this case, gets the data. If we switch to a Elasticsearch, it would still work. It's, it's completely abstracted from that. Uh, so now that we are connected to Solar, we can get data. We can you know, get, I don't know, uh, administrative area, for example, and see what that happens. And you have NSW, WA, et cetera. 
Now we can start looking at our examples and see what else we can do. So let's do a couple of ones really quickly. So let's, let's um, do some sorting. I'll start typing here just to make it easier to read. So we want to sort. And again, you can always check the autocomplete to see the syntax if you want to. But um, let's sort just to make it easy by title. And let's make it ascending. Cool. So we now have our result set sort sorted. And let's add some pagination. Start, <coughs> 0, and uh, 10. OK. So like, just think that you're in your React application coding these things. And you know, you're feeding this stuff into components. Um, you can now have pretty much your your components can now start feeding from this and say, cool, I have, uh, you know, when you change a, a page, basically you set the values on your range. Um, in this case, I'm putting a pagination of 10 items. Might be useful to, uh, not here, to do a result count, which gives you a total count of your query, uh, regardless of the page. So you, you can see that although I have 10 items, my result set is 66. Um, and so you can, with that information, build your pagination system and say, OK, then I have X amount of pages. The other thing we can do uh, is we probably want to, in this case, I'm getting everything from Solar. And let's consider that I'm building a jobs board. And in my, in my case, I probably only want jobs. So you want to add a condition to this. And what the condition does is uh, you add the name of the field which in this case is no type. Again, the, the fields are all index, index fields, so you'd have a no type here. Um, and you want a value of uh, career opportunity. Cool. I have 20 results. This is just jobs, 10 items per page. We got two pages of, of content. And you can see, hopefully, that this is very easy, you know, for from uh, getting data. If you could, if you could look at REST as, as an example and building endpoints and all these things, I haven't coded anything in Drupal at all. There's no code involved in this. It's just enabling a couple of modules. Um, so let's get into uh, a couple more, bit more complex things. Facets. So facets. What we do is we define uh, facets in our query. And in this case, we're going to, let's look at what facets we have. We have uh, study field type, and we can do type of opportunity. OK. So opportunity types. I just, I just typed the field here just to remember the name of the field. So we're going to put a facet on opportunity types. We're going to uh, not limited, meaning not a maximum number of results per facet value. Uh, the operator is or, and I'll explain that in a minute why that is. Uh, min count of one, just so we don't have empty facets getting returned. And missing false, which is just so we have things that are apl applicable to facets. You can check all this stuff. There's a try to write as much documentation as I could. So hopefully, but always obviously submit pull request or, or something like that. So if we just run this like it is, then the facets are actually getting sent to solar. But you actually don't get anything back because you need you need to ch change the schema. You need to define what you want in the schema. So here, uh, sorry, not here, here. We also want facets, and we want the name of the facet. In this case, uh, type of opportunity, and we want the various values that get returned, and for each of them, a count and the you know the value of the filter. So just like this, you get your facets. Uh, 15 internships, 9 graduate jobs. Sorry, could you scroll up a little bit? It's behind you. Uh, where is it? What do you mean? The oh, the sorry. Facet, the oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, defining the facet in the queries here. Anything that is part of the query is here. And here in this bit is kind of like your, your, your schema, what you, the fields you want, what you want returned. So you, you can see you know, a bunch of facets here. And if we actually um, make this into an array, just, just like this. And we can also just add another facet called administrative area. And just like that, get another facet here. 
with your states. So we're sort of going more and more in, you know, into, into the sort of skeleton um, that I was showing you guys. And you can see here that it kind of kind of relates. The, the thing is that at the moment, the user hasn't really interacted with the application. So it's just page get re gets requested, your React pulls all these things, write the, writes the query, and sort of presents the page to the user. But then you want the user to start you know, applying, applying filters and, and doing faceting and things like that. So what you want to do is you want to um, change your conditions based on the selection that the user makes. So for example, um, if someone selects a facet, you want to apply a condition of, say, opportunity type equals internships. Now the thing is, in many cases, you probably don't want to just start adding conditions because you get sort of an AND operator type of thing. So for example, if we look at the actual example here, probably w w when we say type of opportunity and you're a user, you ex if you click these two, and it's even more relevant in a region, I suppose, that if you click NSW and WA, you probably mean that you want results from both and not, not an AND conjunction, you know? Um, Sometimes you do, and you can do that. Um, in our case, we want an OR operation between each value of facet and an AND operation between each facet. So that would be something along the lines of give me all jobs from NSW or, NW or WA that are internships. So this is the type of scenario that I'm going to simulate here, but you, you can really do you know, other types of conjunctions and use ANDs for everything. It's up to you. Uh, this one's good just to demonstrate a bit of more complex um, condition style, which is uh, using condition groups. Right, so, so condition group is basically that is is um, we we define a, con uh, a, a gr several groups of conditions, and we can define how they relate to each other. In this case, we we have. Each group of conditions is um, the different facets. So for example, a type of opportunity, internship, or graduate job. Um, another group would be region. So that the more the user clicks through, and in our case, these are multi-select, so you can select multiple of the same facet, um, each group starts adding more and more conditions to the query. So hopefully that will make sense, but you guys feel free to ask any questions. So as I said, between each group, between each facet, we want to specify an AND condition. So I'll just write that in. And then we have our groups. Uh, oops. Sorry. And then each group is going to have its own conjunction as well. And in this case, it's going to be an OR. And then we specify the conditions. So. Let's say, for example, that the first one is that someone has selected internships. So that would be in your React application. What the application would do is would just add something like this. Oh, Jesus! <laughs> Swear to God, I, I have disabled this, but it just keeps coming. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. We're gonna play some chess. That's nice. Um, all right. Thanks, Apple. So. Um, Condition, and uh, an in this case, I don't even think we need an operator, so we're just going to specify a value of internships. Cool. If I do just this, then basically it's the same as if I click internships on my, on my facet. But as I was saying, I can do multiple conditions uh, within this OR statement. So I can also say graduate jobs. And this is the same as saying the user has clicked on both graduate jobs and internships, and this is an OR condition between them. And you, you sort of start seeing the, you know, the facets changing with the results, the, the counts are changing, and so on. Um, like this? Oh, sorry? Can you resize your browser window so that we can see what you are writing? Oh, so like this, or? Oh, okay, I see. I am in the front of it. Right, okay. Yeah. Awesome. Sorry, guys. Didn't realize. All right. So let's now put another condition into it and say that we've, we've done that scenario where we've done a multi-select uh, on the facets and also added another condition from another facet. So what we're going to do is we're just going to add another group here uh, with another conjunction of OR. 
and some conditions. And in this case, I'm just going to copy paste. Just to, we're going to say that um, the administrative area has been also selected with NSW. And the results change. These are all, as you can see, things that have an S NSW in their result set and that have graduate jobs and internships. Um, cool. So we pretty much have, I think, everything that's going on here on our UI. The only thing really that probably makes sense when we talk about search is actual search, full text. So maybe we should, should do that. Um, and it's actually pretty simple. So I'm just going to uh, remove these conditions here just so we get some results. And we're going to apply on top of the facets. So we still have facets. We're going to do a full text search. And we can specify some keys. Maybe, I don't know. Like, let's see if something exists with example. If not, I'll try again. Sorry, should have prepared better. Um, and we can specify some fields, um, like title. Or if we don't specify anything, it, it would just use all the full text fields in the index. So let's see. Cool. We actually have one. So that's good. We have one example opportunity. Cool. All right. So how much time? Um, it's just a bit. All right. So hopefully that makes a bit of sense in terms of how you can have for example, in this case, two completely different applications using the exact same backend system. Um, and, and just by applying filters, you can specify the conditions, the pagination, the facets, all these things on the React application. Drupal is, the only thing Drupal has is an index and search API. So no facet module, no views, nothing. Uh, and that's, that was pretty interesting for us because that way we can, we can scale. We can add as many applications as we want. Consumers get in. There are some limitations that you can do in things that I won't cover really in this presentation, but like things like query maps to not be just an open gate to everyone, just query wh what they want. Um, so you can actually limit what consumers can do. But this way, there's a lot of flexibility for consumer applications. They can look different. Uh, and we're using a lot of like this component design approach. And the components themselves have query fragments that's hyped to them. So each piece of the interface knows, this is what I need to pull from my query, which is quite interesting. So uh, let's go back. And still, maybe we have a bit of time to show just one more thing. So one thing that I kind of wanted to very quickly show you guys is how you can extend this as well. So um, because this sort of based on the plugin system, you can really change the schema if you want and, and add more things to it or change the fields or get more, more information. Um, and I'll, I'll, I'll share with you a use case um, that we had. So in the sort of in the spirit of keeping things as decoupled as possible, we noticed that even in normal Drupal um, use cases, you end up with a bunch of fields on the index that aren't really necessary for search, but are there just because they, need, they are needed in the UI. So what that means is if, for example, you create a view in Search API, Drupal 7 or 8, for example, the, the fields that you're going to get are the fields that are in the index. So if, you, if your teaser, to show you an example here, uh, for example, is a job and has an entity reference to the employer, if you want that in your UI, you need to index that field. But it's not really used in search, so it kind of didn't make a lot of sense. So what we wanted to do is we wanted to have the power of performing the search query in, in Solar, but then actually get the result set from Drupal. Uh, that way, we can have a, a lot more fields that are not necessarily indexed. We get them straight from Drupal, uh, and we get sort of the best of both worlds. So what, what, what we did was we just extended the schema. And pretty much what you need to do in this case is it says group node because we use groups module. Um, as I said, one content management system for a multiple application, and we're using groups to segment the channels. But you could, you could have this could be called node. And so a uh, bit of annotation there that defines um, the name of the field and the schema. I won't go too much in deep into this. Um, uh, the resolver function, which basically um, we get the result set from Solar, from Search API. And basically, what we're doing is here is loading a bunch of entities based on the result set, in this case, based on the group content ID. And so when we go back to our query, instead of having these sort of flat fields that are sort of normalized just 
you know, they don't, they don't, they don't descend in the graph because they're just either integers or text or whatever. Uh, you can, if you do group notes. Now, use the you know the the typical GraphQL approach. So, this is actually coming from Drupal now. So, if, if we want, for example, to say, okay, uh, this is a group node. So, ID of this get, gets me the node. Uh, get me an entity. Oh, sorry. And uh, maybe Jesus, no, I swear. All right, uh, and this is a node. Career opportunity, and now I want the name of the employer. I'm just basically transversing the graph. I'm just going like tree-like and getting all the stuff I need. And now I'm travel the entity reference to the employer content type, and now I want the title, uh, for example. Cool. So now you get the node and the title of the employer that's attached to that node. And this, and you can just transverse the graph. Uh, and I maintain the, the, the fields in the index purely for search operations. So everything that's in solar indexed in my search API are purely things that are needed for actual search operations. Content, if I need images, if I need, or URLs of images, or if I need anything else that's really completely useless for solar, then I get it straight from Drupal. Hope that makes sense. Um, Cool, so last things, just to... All right. Just to share a bit of the stack, um, you could use different ones, but we're using obviously Drupal 8 as a content repository, purely, just content publishing, editorial, things like workflows, migrations, things, all the great stuff that Drupal's awesome for, and we love it. Apache Solar for search engine, search API module to do the search API things that we all know. GraphQL module to uh, provide the core GraphQL experience. GraphQL search API module to integrate um, search API into the schema. Next.js for our front-end applications. And Apollo, which is the client um, library for you to actually write these queries in React or Vue or Angular. They have a client for, for pretty much everything. Um, some shout outs, uh, obviously, to Joao, which, which is the co-maintainer of GraphQL search API. Huge shout outs for uh, the guys at GraphQL, Philip Malab and Fubi, which were extremely patient and helpful to get this stuff done. And uh, to Thomas Drunken Monkey for the, all the knowledge that he gave us for the search API things. That's it. How do access permissions they use the Drupal access permissions. So it, it pretty much the roles and permissions that you have, the entity access, uh, it's all exposed um, via GraphQL. So it, it uses whatever Drupal uses unless you want to use something different. So you'll, you're, you'll authenticate as a given user? Yeah, and, yeah, uh, yeah. Permissions if you want to. Uh, we actually don't, but that's a separate story because we don't, we, again, spirit couple, we wanted to just really limit Drupal to purely content publishers and, and uh, content platforms, so our users are actually not in Drupal. The tip, but, but you can use other systems to provide entity access. So by that you mean like your current implementation is open to whatever? whatever not open, no. We just use another access system, so in Auth0 in this case. Okay. So it still goes to Drupal um, but, and, and provides access. It's just a different access mechanism. But if you, are, you, know, if you do have Drupal users, then it's just the same as usual. So from the backend point of view, what does the search API GraphSQL module provide? Um, it, the, the search API? No, no your GraphQL module is working with search API. Yeah. Yeah, so, so what is in the core of this module? All right, so good question. Uh, basically plugins, um, uh, so we, we basically have plugin fields and plugin types that extend the GraphQL module. And what they do is basically provide, um, so th there's several types. One is like query fields, which is basically that search API search that you saw. Um, the typical three things, if, if you want to call it that, it would be fields. Some in, in, in some cases have derivers. So for example, to get the list of all fields that are available in an entity, you use a, a, a driver in, in the plugin. Uh, you have interfaces, which is that this sort of fragment stuff that you saw, or actually 
have interfaces to package uh, more generic concepts like API and drill down to Node and a Node article, and then you have types. So you basically, GraphQL module provides you with the framework, which is already on top of Drupal's, and you just need to extend that. If that makes sense. So to use things like spell check highlights, and do I have to have plugins for that, or is it something? Um, if Solar provides it, and if Search API provides it, you can do it here. If there are things that are um, solar specific, we actually have a field which we, again, built on top of Search API, which is called solar param. And basically, you can pass anything that's sort of actual solar language, solar syntax. I haven't done this for Elasticsearch because we're not really using Elasticsearch, but I suppose you could. But if you have like really complex um, query arguments that you want to pass that is very, very, very solar specific, you can just use solar param. Um, and we have some others that I just didn't show due to time, but things like more like this, I don't know if you know the feature, but you can just get, you know, provide an article and say more like this, and it gives you a list of similar articles using the more like this feature from Solar, which is quite useful for like related content and things like that.